Hey everybody, they're really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Lost Alice along Owen Chester's route. We're starting chapter two today. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. I saw myself in the darkness. Is this a dream? I was silently crying. However, it wasn't out of hopelessness or despair. And those eyes burned flames of quiet determination. No matter what, a single teardrop ran down my cheek, but my gaze remained steadfast. I'll do whatever it takes. Hmm? Suddenly, my dream came to an end, and I squirmed in bed. I got up slowly again, and found myself in a strange room. It was a guest room in the castle of chess. After my dinner with Owen last night, I must have been thoroughly exhausted from being thrust into unfamiliar surroundings and all that had happened since. I recall changing into the clothes that had been set out for me and falling asleep like a log. There was a hesitant knock on the door when I remembered all that had happened. Come in. Pardon me? After answering courteously, the same maid from yesterday entered the room. Miss Alice, it's time for your breakfast. I'll get ready right away. Uh, can I change on my own? I complied with the maid and got out of bed. She led me to a hall where Owen was already waiting. Hmm. As he watched me approach, his face suddenly took on a serious expression. He looks a little angry. Are you mad at me for some reason, Owen? Honestly speaking, the change in his expression caused my heartbeat to pick up. Iris. Unlike the friendly look he usually gave me, he was gazing at me intently. Owen then stood from his seat and began to speak as he approached me. Have you been crying? His blunt question prompted me to look down to avoid eye contact. He must have noticed my eyes were red. I... Uh, which option do I pick? I'm going to select I need to tread cautiously. Hmm. I debated how I should respond. If I were to be honest, I had been crying in my dream. I wasn't crying because something sad had happened to me in reality. But if I tell him the truth, then he might think I'm depressed. I needed to tread cautiously so Owen went didn't get the wrong idea. I tried to choose my words wisely so that my meaning would come across accurately. But before I could do so... Is there anything I can do to help? Owen closed the distance between us and gently cradled my face in his hands. Oh, There was barely any space between us as he looked at me intently. Oh my god, he's won my heart already! O Owen! His eyes were filled with concern and I could tell that he sincerely cared about me. What's suddenly gotten into you? This isn't like you at all. How would you know? You only just known him for like an hour. I slowly removed his hands from me, respectfully, and placed some distance between us. He complied without forcing the issue, but his gaze never wavered. Owen fixed his eyes on me as he quietly spoke. Whatever the reason may be, I cannot stand seeing women in tears. I felt like I was in danger of being consumed by the charisma he exuded. Maybe this is what it meant to act like a king. Even so, his concern for me appeared to be real. It was uncertain that his concern was out of genuine kindness or some sense of responsibility. I wasn't able to tell at the moment. I suppose it's because we just met yesterday. Yeah, I made the best choice again! I'm guessing really well today! What's more, I don't know the first thing about him. I cleared my throat and smiled in an attempt to change the subject. I'm hungry. Do you mind if I sit down? What? Why are you giving me dots right now? Shouldn't you be saying, please help yourself, as a gentleman? Owen simply nodded in silence, without questioning me further or allowing his smile to falter. As soon as I sat down, a scrumptious breakfast was served. Ah, oh, that sounds good. After finishing breakfast, I waylaid Owen. Oh, this is a lovely corridor with all these Pegasus statues. It's pretty. You know, Owen, you summoned me here because you wanted to speak to Alice, didn't you? If that's the case... Then you certainly accomplished what you set out to do, so there's no need for me to stay here in the castle, is there? Might I remind you that you have amnesia? Do you have anywhere else to go? Uh, well, I need to try to familiarize myself with stuff and get rid of the amnesia? Well, of course I didn't. But I knew that I wouldn't be able to solve anything by staying cooped up here in the castle of chess. I know there has to be something. Something important that I should be doing. I didn't know why, but I could sense it. Even now I was filled with a sense of restlessness that wouldn't go away. 
Just as I was getting ready to answer Owen, a chess soldier appeared. Bleh! It's literally a chess soldier, with a stand and everything. Forgive me for interrupting. You have a visitor, your majesty. Ah, uh, it must be the bearer of time. I've been expecting him. Owen seemed to know who to expect as he walked toward the throne room. Wait, Owen, I haven't finished talking to you. He's the king, he's busy. He has more important things than you, Alice. Iris, whatever. Excuse me, but as chess king, I have my priorities. You're welcome to come too, Iris. I'll introduce you to the bearer of time. That is rather intriguing. Owen spoke briskly before walking off with his cloak fluttering behind him. The bearer of time? I'd never heard of such an occupation. I must have forgotten about it as well. I'm somewhat intrigued. Maybe it's somebody I know. Now that my interest was piqued, I followed after Owen. Maybe it can jog my mind. Wait a minute, you gotta be kidding me. The March Hare is the bearer of time? You are quite busy as usual, Owen. He's so hot, isn't he? I had actually read the first episode of Luke, though I haven't had time to edit it yet. So I may pick up Luke after I do Owen, but we'll see. But I did see the March Hare in the Mad Hatter's Realm, so I did meet his hotness there. The young man made no attempt to act obsequious before the king. Nope, he doesn't look like that type. The first thing I noticed was the long rabbit ears that stood up from his flaming orange hair. The first thing I noticed is that sexy score on his eye. As they spoke, the young man regarded Owen with orange-colored eyes that matched his hair. I'm here to deliver time, as promised. Ugh! There's that headache again. My head started to throb as the young man mentioned that word. It's happening again. What's going on here? Iris, allow me to introduce you. This is Sid, the bearer of time. Not the March Hare? When the young man noticed me as I followed, he glanced at me with his orange-colored eyes. Ah, oh, so that's Alice, huh? I see you wasted no time in capturing her. I haven't been captured. Owen didn't seem to mind that the man was straightforward, or rather outspoken. I wouldn't describe it as captured. I simply welcomed her here as a guest. Isn't that the same thing? I suppose it makes no difference as long as she has no qualms about it. I returned his stare and tilted my head sideways before posing my question. And, uh... Ah, oh, pleasure to meet you, Alice. I'm Sid, but people on Wonderland know me as the March Hare. I'm here on some business. So he has multiple occupations. Sid Rex, the March Hare. I think Rob will be reading him, which I look forward to. I think he'll do good with Rex. The March Hare? Yeah. But the bearer of time is a more apt name for me today. There appears to be no delay or lack of time today. It helps that despite appearances, you're a hard worker. Owen spoke as if to tell Sid to leave Alice alone and return to work. Well, what do you mean by appearances? So the king gets to say whatever he wants, huh? Well, yeah, he's the king. Sid feigned exasperation before smiling and shrugging his shoulders at Owen. Well, unless the timekeeper oversleeps, I'll be able to fulfill my obligations. The timekeeper? Ugh. What is the- Oh no, that doesn't look good. That looks like I've been in a mental hospital. The room based on white, and there was a bed. It was... a hospital. I was standing next to it then. Who is this? Lying on the bed was a young man named Isaac. I see, so we're going through this whole Alice thing to save this guy? I mean, I'm jumping to conclusions, but... That's the impression I get right off the bat. He was very special to me. He was my lifesaver. After a certain incident, I considered him as my brother. Isaac. He continued to sleep before me. In a coma, I guess. Several doctors had examined him, but he failed to regain consciousness. I was told that there was nothing else that could be done, that I needed to let him go. Is he on life support then, or... Hmm. I'm not giving up. Those thoughts whirled inside me. Isaac is just sleeping. He's not dead. Physically, there's nothing wrong with him. So he has to wake up one of these days. I'm going to find a way to cure him. I made a vow to myself. That man suffers from the malady of time. His time has been stolen by the timekeeper. What? Suddenly, a mysterious shadow appeared in the room. So you're the one who pulled me into this. Whoever you are. The man wore a black hood, 
pulled deeply over his eyes, making it impossible to see his facial expression. Who are you? Why are you here? I didn't even notice the door was open. He suddenly appeared without warning. I am the spinner of tales. I'm here to help you. Don't you want to get back his time? Yes, I do. I know what you need to do, so let me tell you. There's only one way to get back stolen time. All you need to do is take it back from the timekeeper. The timekeeper? Indeed, he is the only one who is permitted to give and take time. I see. Take me to him now! Under normal circumstances, it would be hard to believe the claim being made by the spinner of tales. But there was a supernatural aura surrounding the man who called himself the spinner of tales. If the spinner of tales managed to exist, it was equally plausible that the timekeeper was also very real. This is what led me to believe his words. Then, I started to speak, fighting with the confusion that threatened my entire body. So, the only way to rescue Isaac from eternal sleep is to get that time back from the timekeeper. Correct. The spinner of tales nodded, his voice holding a hint of satisfaction. Tell me, spinner of tales, where is this timekeeper? He is in Wonderland. But then he gently waved a quill in his hand. It's the world of a tale that I created. It's nothing like the real world in which you live. So, how can I get to this Wonderland? I was desperate to find a way to save Isaac. Don't worry, it's very easy. It's a choice that will bring everyone happiness. I sensed that he was slightly smiling behind his hood. All you need to do is become Alice. And lose my memories, apparently? If you agree to become Alice, the protagonist in my story, then I'll be happy to take you to Wonderland. Alice! I was suddenly overcome by uncertainty. It was the discomfort of knowing that my existence could change into something entirely different. But it was fleeting. I had no other choice if that was the only way to save Isaac. If you go to Wonderland, you should be able to see the timekeeper before long. But I can't guarantee that he'll be willing to return that time. All I can do is take you to Wonderland as Alice. Ugh. Now, choice is in your hand. The spinner of tales waited for my reply. I already knew what my answer would be. I'll become Alice. Please, take me to Wonderland. It was clear as day. I was so determined. No matter what I have to do, I vow. I will rescue Isaac. The reason for my being Alice, for coming to Wonderland. It all came back to me in a flash as soon as I heard the word timekeeper. Please, take me to the timekeeper. I interrupted the conversation with my impulsive demand. It was no wonder Owen and Sid both looked at me aghast. First of all, calm down, Iris. You appear to be confused right now. I am perfectly calm. I just remembered everything. My reason for coming to Wonderland and for becoming Alice. It was all to meet this timekeeper. Hmm. Despite my entreaty, Owen's expression remained stern. It's not a good idea for you to meet the timekeeper. Cronus Carlyle. At least, not yet. Why not? Can you give me a reason? It's not that time in the story yet. Owen just silently shook his head. How about you, Sid? Are you on my side? Maybe if Sid, the bearer of time, was on my side, I could meet Cronus. I held up hope, but... No, I agree with Owen. I think it's best you don't meet him. That's because the Timekeeper has the power to stop time in Wonderland with a single wave of his cane. So? That's how scary he is, regardless of whether or not it's true. Sid's words seemed to hold a wealth of meaning. I see. I looked from Sid to Owen and released a small sigh. I could try to convince Owen, but it was two against one. <sighs> All right. I decided to back down for now. Of course, I had no intention of giving up. Maybe I could go find Luke or somebody else and see if they'll help me. Or I could just go look by myself. Alright, that's it for now. Sid hopped on the perch of the carriage, loaded with packages. Thinking back on their conversation, those packages were most likely filled with time. I want one of those. I need some. I need some time. I'll be back on the appointed day. 
Si Long Owen. <sighs> Just then, I was holding my breath. I had pretended to return to my room, but I was actually hiding among the packages. Oh no, that's not a good idea. I'm escaping. Sid, I seem to have forgotten to give you some time. Hmm. Owen spoke to Sid and then made his way to the carriage. Oh no. I crouched down under the cloth, covering my head in an attempt to escape his notice. Needless to say, my effort was pointless. Oh, I don't want to use too many pay tickets in a row, but I can't stop there. Owen came closer and brushed the cloth away, grabbing me from my hiding place. Owen! He pulled me up and locked me into his arm from behind. Did you think you could escape me? Maybe. Well, maybe she did, but I knew she couldn't. Heroines can never do that. His voice rang against my ear. Despite my predicament, his manly voice with a sweet tone made a shiver run down my spine. Yo, I didn't notice that you were hiding. Sid smiled in amusement when he saw me emerge from the luggage compartment. In contrast to Sid's carefree attitude, Edwin's subdued voice sounded calm. Oh, I thought I told you it wasn't the right time for you to meet the timekeeper. But I beg to disagree. The tone of his voice was gentle, but... The sigh he released was filled with exasperation. I expect you to obey me. When did we reach that arrangement? You are my guest. As long as you stay at the castle, consider my word as law. <sighs> I wasn't about to let him boss me around, so I tried to break free from his hold. I tried glaring at Owen, but I couldn't see his expression. I told you I wanted to leave the castle. But I didn't agree, did I? He was undoubtedly laughing. That made me furious. After Owen released me, I turned to glare at him. I knew from the beginning that I needed to be wary of the chess king. This incident reminded me how formidable he could be. Yep, need to be on your toes. Preview! Hey, it's Sid the March Hare. Let me take a sneak peek at the next page. I mean, Alice is hilarious. See how she tried to outsmart the chess king? Talk about brave. I'd say she's fearless. <laughs> Whoops, I need to get back on track. Here, let's take a look at the next page. Owen was in his office, and beside him was a strange young man with cat ears. Isn't that Kyle? I met him in the forest right after I woke up in Wonderland. Cat ears, warm chocolate-colored hair, and that significant voice. I would know him anywhere. It can't be healthy to stay cooped up in the castle all day. Would you like to accompany me into town? Really? Yes, as long as you don't try to kick me and escape. You know you'd just come and capture me right away if I did. You're absolutely right. A date, huh? That's nice. But the chess king and Alice talk about a conspicuous couple. Well, that's all for the preview. See you around, Alice. Well, I guess that's going to have to be it for today, because I can't spend $10 a day on tickets, so... <laughs> oh, unfortunately, they just make the chapters so short. Mm. So we're going to have to leave off here for now and uh, go for more in the next episode tomorrow. So hope to see you then or in some of my other videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.